is uh, Caesarea Philippi. This particular city is north of Sea of Galilee. We have three scriptural references about Caesarea Philippi. Matthew chapter 16, then we have in Mark 8 and Luke 9. Now when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea, uh, Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say John the Baptist and others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you think that I am? Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered, Thou art the Christ. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjum. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. That great confession of Peter came in this in this place remember Jesus is Christ the son of living God and he is the savior of the world we at the lighthouse are driven by a vision and mission statement which is to be the light let your light shine be the light we are driven by verses like a city on a hill cannot be hidden.
Christ, whom he appointed as their heir of all things, through whom he has created the world. God has been revealing himself through many ways. We have the written word of God through which God has revealed himself to us. Then we have the eternal word of God, which is Lord Jesus Christ, through whom Jesus Christ has revealed us the Father. Not only that, we have in nature, when we look at the creation, we look that things are in orderly fashion. We see the universe, and we also see a direct revelation of God. God is in a process of revealing himself. Just like a relationship. God is invisible. He is in heaven. But because he loves us, listen to me, he wants to reveal himself to us. Direct revelation. Before even the written word was given, we see God revealing, speaking to people. The spoken word coming to Moses. The spoken word coming to baby Samuel. The spoken word coming to Saul while he was on the way of Damascus. Isaiah, he's speaking to in dream. Then we have visions People seeing visions of God. Apostle Paul in the book of Acts, we see him seeing visions. Peter seeing a vision. We see God revealing himself in many different ways. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 21 says, For no prophecy ever come by the will of man, but men spoke from God, being moved by the Holy Spirit. Both the Old Testament and the New Testament brings us a revelation of God, God trying to reveal himself to us. Second, real quick, what is inspiration? Many times we get these two terms confused. Revelation, in revelation we see God revealing himself, and in inspiration, to be very precise, we see God inspiring his revelation in form of inscription. In inspiration, whatever God has revealed himself, we see being written down, we see being inscribed. Again, tremendous power of the Holy Spirit, total work of the Holy Spirit. Inspiration is not like how we think. Sometimes when we look at a movie or when we read a book or a testimony, we are inspired by that. The scriptural inspiration is different from that. It is a total work of God. The scriptural inspiration is primarily a writing of the scripture in inspiration that revelation of God is inscribed in a form of a text. Enlightenment is what we saw in that video, what we read in the text, the story about Peter. The word of revelation has been on his ears. The eternal word, Lord Jesus Christ, is speaking to him. There were many disciples around, but when a question was asked, who do you think I am? Answer did not come from all 12. All 12 were disciples making disciples. All 12 were disciples doing miracles. All 12 were disciples following the master. But only one, only one, that is Peter. We see him coming to a conclusion and giving that great confession that you are the Christ. What is this enlightenment that Bible is talking about? We read in the scripture. Apostle Paul is even praying over here and he's saying that having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17. In a spiritual sense, being illuminated is turning on the light of our understanding. It is understanding the knowledge that has already been given. There is nothing new that Peter told about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the anointed one. He is the Christ. He is the Son of God. There is nothing new that he said. But there is nothing, something new that was revealed to him for the first time. The important ministry of the Holy Spirit that we miss out on is the ministry of being enlightened from the Word of God being enlightened by the Holy Spirit. When we read certain scriptures, all of a sudden the scripture starts speaking to us. Many times it is my habit. I want to read something, I would just go to my favorite verses. Many times God has given us many ministries and even we see people, moment we see people, people have their favorite ministries. It is good to have your favorite ministry, 
but god's will for your life is to grow that you continue and to increase in the ministry and the anointing that god has given you it is good to have one kind of a specialization but it is also good to have our ears open so that when god starts to speak to us we are ready and opening our hearts to hear what the spirit has to give us the spirit does not give us a new revelation rather the spirit opens our ears and our eyes to the truth that god has for us in his word that the question is if this is a special ministry of the holy spirit that enlightens us if this is a special ministry of the holy spirit that we see in the life of a believer why is it so important and i think one of the answers or one of the part of the answers is that it is important because it is hard to grasp it is easier for us to go to our favorite passages it is easier many a times for us to just keep on doing the things that we like to do but it is not easy for us to go to a passage that we do not understand and ask god what is the meaning of this passage the lack of understanding of the word of god not what i want to teach but opening up the word of god and allowing the word to speak to our heart it is only for you it is only for me who is seated over here who have received lord jesus christ in their heart because it is our responsibility to grow in the knowledge in the word of god and the holy spirit brings wisdom and revelation that otherwise will not come to us holy spirit will teach us and tell us certain things that will be completely contrary to what our human nature the spirit man and the physical man they may not think together it will always be a struggle it will always be my mind wants to do certain thing but the spirit is wanting me to do completely different thing are we allowing the enlightenment that comes only through the word of god to our everyday walk with the lord you know it is very good to say that disciples making disciples and even as i was reading this yes these disciples were making disciples these disciples were witnessing the miracles they were with the master these disciples were going on the missions these were going as missionaries and now they are at a very strategic point very interesting i want to tell you something about caesarea of philippi it is a little north as you have seen in the video of jesus's base and when we were there we saw the beautiful place and there is a temple of a pagan god called as panias now the city is called as banias but originally it was called as panias it is a pagan god which has a half body of a human being and upper body is of a goat now when you are walking when people are walking that panias god or a deity would just come out of a sudden and scare a person and cause a person to go into a panic and hence the name panias there are temples over there and as we go to this to this city we were able to see walk up onto the mountains and we were able to see all the pagan idols and every idol has its own assigned temple and lord jesus christ is in this particular place he is surrounded by those idols he is talking to his disciples over there he is teaching to them and he is asking them a question who do people think i am who do you think i am jesus is literally standing amongst other gods jesus is literally in the presence of other temples jesus is standing there and his eyes and the disciples are almost looking at that and saying all these grecian temples all these different gods and now you tell me who do you think i am people of god there are times in your life and in my life wherein we need a revelation from god that allows us to speak to answer to understand who really our lord jesus christ is in this particular passage he is saying that blessed are you simon barjona for flesh and blood has not revealed it to you there is no way that your mind can tell who jesus is the reason you are telling me who i am 